Hey Nanny Kindred, it's Tabby, and I am here with my first finished object of 2024. This is the Lawrenson sweater by Lily Kate France. Um, yeah, I knit the majority of this in 2023, but I finished it in 2024. So let's talk about this, and then I'm going to talk about my knitting from 2023 and my plans for 2024. So this is, I believe, an Erin Waite sweater. Um, I don't know. I don't know any of the details, I'm so unprepared. So this is an Erin Waite sweater, it's knit on size 8 needles. I think I wound up using a worsted weight, I could be wrong, I'm not 100% sure. I had a little bit of a journey with uh, the yarn. This is a P4 pattern and the first time I saw it was in um, Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater 2020. Um, where everyone kind of compiled it was a virtual ride back. Um, so I saw this blue sweater that someone had knitted and I really liked it and I was like, those sleeves are amazing. Most of the reason I want to knit Lily Kate Francis sweaters is because there's some kind of detail with the sleeves that I'm just blown away by. Because like Anne Shirley of Green Gables, I can't resist just a puff sleeve. So that is why I knit this sweater. Is the sleeves were amazing. I wanted to have a sweater with um, good sleeves. So, about the yarn. I want to say two to three years ago, I bought two skeins of what I thought was Erin Waite yarn and this color that's kind of like this shift between blue and with an undertone of like, it's a teal like with an undertone of green. Um, I bought it, I'm pretty sure, at Castaway Yarn Shop in Santa Rosa. I bought two skeins and I was like, I want to knit a sweater with this. So first I started knitting the As If T, um, and I wound up ripping it out. I decided it was not for me. Um, I probably will never knit that pattern, and it was just one of those impulse knits that everyone else is doing, so I should do it too, and not for me. So then I was like, well, I really want to knit this sweater, and I think it's an Erin Waite um, yarn, so let's go for it. So. I knit the body and then I ran out of the yarn. I had a completed body and I was like, I had the tr this much yarn left and I'm like, well I can't knit sleeves with that and by this time I had lost um, or thrown away the, uh, the tag so I didn't know what brand it was, I didn't know what color it was and I had no clue what it was. Um, so I went to my local yarn shop and showed them the knitted body and I was like, hey, I don't know what this yarn is, I ran out, I think I bought it in Santa Rosa, do you have any idea what it is? And she said, no, nope, I've never seen this yarn before, no clue what it is, you would be better off making your worst sweater into a vest with, you know, um, contrast neck and armholes and just like a cute little sweater vest and I was like, but I really want to knit this sweater for the sleeves! So what I did was I followed Castaway Yarn Shop on Instagram. I pulled out my Instagram messages and I shot them a picture of the sweater. I was like, hey, I think I bought this yarn from you. I lost the tag. I have no clue what it is. Do you know what it is? And so they sent me back um, a message and said it is... I still can't remember what it is, honestly. They sent a message back and said, it is Barocca Ulta Apaca, and I think the colorway is Green Heather. So I was like, yeah, that's totally what it is. Jumped on a random website I Googled, the first website I got, and ordered the two more skeins of this yarn from the whatever website it was, so I could knit the sleeves. In hindsight, I feel bad about not ordering again from Castaway Yarn Shop since they were the ones that were amazing and they came through and they told me what it was. I should have ordered from them, thrown a little more business their way, but I was stupid and didn't. So it is kind of a more rustic yarn. It's got fiber sticking out. Like I said, it's got the green undertone. Um, so between all the skeins, I think I used about four in this sweater. Um, when I completed it, I went back and added like a couple little inches of ribbing um, because I it was a little too cropped for my taste. I did block it, so I think it grew a little more. 
Um, this pattern does have waist shaping in it, and fortunately, um, through stress eating, I have become a little thicker and got a little bit of a tummy. So I didn't do the waist shaping. I went for the option that had no waist shaping, um, and I still think it is a nice flattering fit. Um, one of the unique details is on the side, they have this ribbing going down that gets bigger, um, which is kind of cool. I've never done a sweater like that. It is a twisted rib, I believe. So I haven't worn it at all yet, but I'm pretty pleased with the way it came out. I love the sleeves. I think they're amazing. I think it's a nice color. Um, I think it would have been a relatively quicker sweater than it. If I hadn't had to wait for the yarn to come for the sleeves, uh, I'm not sure how long it took me, but I worked on a couple different projects and I knit this one. Um, and, uh, so what was wound up being left of the four seams was this amount. So I have the little ball from the original and then I have these two left between um, doing the sleeves. The neck band and then adding more onto the rib. Um, it might be enough to knit like a little matching hat, but honestly, I didn't want to knit a little matching hat because when I first was looking at the sweater, it just reminded me of like Victorian or Edwardian vibes, and I was going for it for that reason. But then I outgrew like my Victorian walking skirt, so yeah. Anyway, um, this sweater was one of three that I wanted to knit in the last two years. So in 2022, I had three different sweaters I wanted to knit in that year, didn't knit any of them. I wanted to knit the same three sweaters in 2023. It didn't happen. I did start on this one. I did start on another one. So this one is now finished. I'm hoping now that I can finish all three sweaters. So the, the one that I finished is, of course, the Lawrence and Sweater by Lily Kate France that I, I am wearing. The second sweater that I wanted to knit, um, and this was a birthday gift from my father, so he gave me the pattern, and then I got a gift card to my local yarn shop, and I went and bought the yarn. Um, I've had a couple false starts to the sweater. It is a tricky one to cast on, like I cast it on too small, and it didn't fit over my head, and then I was having, I'm not a great, like, lace patterns don't always make sense to me, so then I was struggling with lace pattern and then I was like well it's really just a repeat pattern so once you set it up it's fine but this is I believe the Gibson Ruff <laughs> this is the Gibson Ruffle Blouse by Fable Knitwear um, and I have I think it's mm, Dream Dream in a Color Yarn um, and this is in the Wineberry color I have two skeins of it, so hopefully that's enough. I have made progress on it. I believe I tried it on and it fits over my head, so I'm excited about actually maybe finishing this sweater because I've had, I want to say I've started it like three different times and ripped it out. Um, I also have the mohair for the ruffle. Uh, this is a sweater I saw on Christy Glass Knits and then wanted to knit. So this is knitted with and the fairy floss and floss madge or lazy no I think the color is madge and it's mohair and silk so I'm hoping to finish that in 2024 um, it is I think gonna again be with the Edwardian Victorian vibes I wanted for this sweater um, now I just gotta find skirts to wear it with since or lose some weight since my other ones don't fit anymore. Um, but I think this is a really pretty color and I'm excited for it. At first, for a long time it's been a drag because I've ripped it out so many times, but I'm excited. Maybe it will be a really pretty sweater once I'm done. And maybe I can wear it for my birthday in 2024. We'll see. Um, and the third sweater I wanted to make on this list was the Mountain Range sweater. So it is a color work sweater. Um, and it's by Natalie Meredith, and I have never knit a color work sweater, I think, no, that's wrong. I've done, like, Intarsia. I've done an Intarsia cat sweater, which I'll link to. Um, I did that one a couple years ago, but I think this one is truly more of, like, a color work, um, sweater. 
I don't know if it's in Target. No, it's just some duplicate. So I don't have a whole lot of experience with color work and I think um, this sweater is really nice. It reminds me of the mountains in my hometown which I miss. So that's kind of the reason why I want to knit it. And I have the color palette in mind. I just gotta buy the yarn and the pattern. Um, so that would be nice if I could knit that this year too. I'm not holding out hope because the last two years I wanted to knit these three sweaters and it hasn't happened. But now one is finished, one is on the way, and maybe I'll have time for the mountain range. I do also want to knit a different color work sweater and I'm not super sure I haven't picked it out. Um, I have this Angora, so in my knitting plans for 2024. I have this Angora that a friend gave me and I started knitting this 50s sweater pattern. So I've gotten the front and the back done. Um, but I'm guessing this Angora has sat around for a while. It's probably from the 50s. I've tried looking up the brand. I can't find a brand of yarn anywhere. I can't find more of it. So while I had enough for the front and the back, this is how much I have left. And this is a sleeve. So I don't think I have enough, and my mom, my mom's warned me, do I listen? Um, I don't think I have enough to make another sleeve and then do the yoke. So I think I'm going to rip it out and wind up using this Angora in a color work yoke. Um, I'm thinking, I think it's a, it's a fingering weight, so I'm thinking I need to buy some. I don't know, this is a very pale blue, kind of gray color. I don't know what would be a high contrast. I'm not sure that white would be enough of a high contrast or a tan or maybe a speckle um, or a darker blue. I'm not sure. I need to, I think, go to the yarn shop and figure it out. Um, though I don't want to 100% do it. I think I just need to pull out the yarn and wash it too because I knew it needed a wash because it was kind of, I don't know, buggy. It sat around somewhere and someone something. Um, so I saw that Christy Glass had knitted um, a colorwork sweater and she had used Angora and that colorwork and that gave me that idea. So I think I'm picturing like the Angora in some kind of floral colorwork yoke. Um, one of the patterns I was looking at was actually just plain and then the colorwork was at the bottom. Um, my concern for this Angora, it is kind of like very delicate, so in some areas it is kind of thin, like it might pull apart. Um, that is my only concern about adding it in color work is like I don't want to wear a color work sweater a lot and then have the Angora rub to nothing and then just unravel. Um, but that, those are some of my 2024 knitting plans. If you have any knitting plans, let me know. Or if you knitted any of Lily Kate France's sweaters, I knit two of her. I knit two of her sweaters last year. I really only knitted three things. Garment-wise, last year I knitted the two underlace tops, um, and then I knitted a shrug that I didn't want up giving to a friend. Um, I spent time on this sweater last year, and then I had the vest I think at the beginning of the year that I had spent time on, and then ripped out. Um, so not many garments finished last year. I'd like to make more this year um, and finishing one in January I think has given me a good start. So we'll see. But thanks for watching and if you have any um, questions about knitting, any projects you're working on, drop some comments below and I'll catch you for the next finished object. Have a great day.